there are times when you're working with strings that things can get a little complicated. And I've gone ahead and made a complex statement here where I see the word C in double quotes, the savings. And now I don't have the code written there because I want to get to this as being my ending point where I actually can show the double quotes in my string as well as the dollar sign in front of a word like savings. And so if we were to try to replicate that, most often we probably would do something like put a double quote in there, type in C, and then end that double C with a double quote, and then the, we'll type in there the dollar sign, and then finish out the word savings. Now, that might be the first attempt to try to do this. If I hit save and then refresh my page, you're going to see that I've got some errors. So let's go ahead and talk about some of our errors. When we use double quotes in within a string, like the word C here has double quotes, we need to escape or quote those double quotes out to treat them as a regular character rather than the double quote that means basically to hold all the strings or all the letters or characters together for a string. So we can do that with what's called the backslash. So if I type in a backslash before that particular double quote, what it's going to do is it's going to treat this double quote here as a regular character and you can see that it's now continued the gray um, lettering rather than turning it black meaning it didn't end if you kind of look at the color coding here. I also need to do that same thing right there. So every time I use a double quote um, and if I hit save now and refresh it, you're going to see that it's starting to work. You can see the word C now appears and so that comes out in double quotes. However, when we get to the savings part of this where the dollar sign is, it thinks that it's a variable. So again, if we're going to use a dollar sign as part of a name, like that could look like it would be a variable, and I want to actually have the dollar sign put out there, what I need to do again is use the backslash to quote that out. So if I save it now and refresh it, you can see that we've now gotten to the see the savings. And basically we were able to make it a, a complex string appear the way that we want it. So always remember that backslash to to quote things out or to escape things out so that we can use some of our special characters as a regular character within my strings. Also, let's go ahead and make another complex one. I'm going to go ahead and create a variable. Let's just go ahead and create um, just create a variable called item and I'll set it equal to uh, hard drive. And I'll just do it all one word there. And the reason why I want to do this is because if I add characters to the end of a string so let's go ahead and say I want to echo out just the term here for item. It's going to be it's going to work here for us if I refresh it. You'll see hard drive gets a, appears there. So let me go ahead and also add in here break tag echo. There we go. So now if I hit save and refresh, it puts it on another line. So hard drive. But what if I wanted to say there are 15 hard drives out there. So I would type in something like there are 15 and then I've got this dollar sign item. Let's go ahead and save it. And refresh. Everything is looking okay so far but if I want to add an S to the end of this one here let's go ahead and try to add that S and I hit save and I hit refresh. You can see it's got a problem and that's because when I add the S to this item it sees it as a variable called items not just item. And so depending on what we're working with, I may want to add an S to something that was singular to make it plural. And so when it comes to something like this, we're going to have to modify our code a little bit. And there are two different ways that I know of in order to get this to work. One way is to turn this into, it's basically it's a complex type of string. We can use something like the curly braces, the opening and closing curly braces, put that around my string like this, and it will recognize it as being the string item and then any other characters after it. So if I hit save and then refresh, you'll see that hard drives now appear. So that's kind of a nice handy little thing to remember whenever you're working with strings and you want to make them from singular to plural or add additional characters to the end of a string itself whenever you're trying to display it. If you remember from a previous lesson, we could also do something like um, concatenating things together. So I could have actually kept it as item like this. Let me go ahead and hit save and refresh it there are 15 hard drive and then what we could do is concatenate the S in there as well and that would have worked as well if I hit save and refresh. So this concludes the video here on escaping some characters and then also working with some complex string type syntaxes.